Well, hello there, friends. So guess what we're doing today? We're doing a 68 Ford truck seat. Don't see many of these. See a lot of Chevy C10s, right? Okay, so they're gonna be pretty similar because that was about the, the time when everything was the same. There were standards back then, believe it or not, or standards in design anyway. So this see here, we're going to go from this to all black vinyl. He requested some pockets in the front where he could put his little map pockets or whatever. And for the back of the seat, he wants to, uh, me to make a, a bag for his 22 rifle. So this ought to be pretty special when it's done. So we're going to tear everything down to the frame. And we're going to give this thing a makeover. So what we're going to do is get rid of all this old nastiness here. We're going to replace it with new burlap, new foam, and new uh, Dacron pad. So here we go. Oh, and remember to hit the like button because if you hit the like button, people will like my video more and more people will get to see it. Thank you. So the first thing I need to do is get rid of this old seat cover, the slip over seat cover. So I just go like that, get rid of that. So as you can see here, all the patterns are warped. You see that's not a straight line right there? Well, we're going to make it a straight line when we make our new pattern. Same thing with all of this. This backrest here is leaning a little bit to the left over here. So we're going to fix that. And you can see how the this here should be a straight line right here. But you can see how it shrunk up and it curved. It's probably been like that for 30, 25 years. So I would say that any pattern that I would get here from the driver's side is unusable. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the best of the two. And we're really going to make our patterns off of the passenger side right here. So it's in much better condition. So what we'll do is we'll just make a left and a right. Just like that mirror image. And that's how we're going to get our patterns. That's technique number 82. If you're a regular to the channel, you'll know the very first thing that I do. Oh, can't read it. But it used to say China marker. Okay, it's, it's getting wore down a little bit. So anyway, I take my white China marker. And I mark, mark all the intersections. That's what, I, that's what we do here. So we will do that. You can see here, there's an intersection right there. There's going to be one right here. Another one right here. And that ought to get us what we need. Any more? Do you see any more? Did I miss anything? You know what I do is sometimes when there's a long span like this here, what I'll do is I'll also put a mark right there. Just so that way later, when I go to sew it back up, I know that everything's going to line back up again. I think I'll put one right here. And one right here. The next thing to do is to take Louise, the box cutter. And if you've seen some of my other videos, you've seen where I take a grinder to the edge right here. You see how rough that is? That's that way... I'm not destroying vinyl, especially if it's a good piece of vinyl that I'm just doing a repair on. So what this does is this totally annihilates and destroys the thread. So let's do that. And now for technique number 432. So earlier we talked about these warped patterns. So one way to remedy that is just to take a straight edge. You can see the difference there. You see how warped it is? 
So I just take our straight edge, draw our new line right here. And that's gonna be our new pattern, just like magic. Then we'll just take our scissors. Oh man, this thing is stuck, isn't it? It's been there since 1968, I guess. So what we'll do is just cut right there on that white line. That's our new pattern. I will also do the same for this line right here. You can see how that one's warped. So let's go ahead and straighten that one out. Get rid of that curve. So I'm just going to go ahead and continue taking it apart. Some of you might be wondering, okay, well, if you're using the scissors, your uh, overlap, or what would you call it? The, the extra material that you have when you're sewing it together, it's usually like three eighths of an inch. It's gone, right? It just disappeared, like what you see right here. So what I do when I make the new patterns is I add in that that three eighths of an inch right there on the cut edges that I'm cutting with the scissors. Okay, let's just continue taking this thing apart. So let me know in the comments section how many of you followed my advice and created a Lucille the Box Cutter like this to help you shred the threads. I'd like to hear from you. What's underneath your seat cover? So when you collect these old hog rings like this, make sure you collect them in one spot on the table. Don't throw them on the ground. So that way you can collect them easily and put them in the trash. You don't want to step on these. I really should be doing this outside. This is a dusty, dusty mess right here. But outside today, the weather is not very nice. So I find myself inside. Well, 
I just got off the phone with a customer and he told me this fantastic story about this truck. He said it's been in his family since new in 1968. So it was handed down to him by his grandfather and he handed it down to his son. His son handed it down to his son. He said it's in the family for four generations. The reason I called him is because I was going to give him the chance to do something with the seat frames. Sometimes guys they'll have them painted or they'll have them powder coated. Uh, but when he says now nah, this truck is all original uh, it's got original engine transmission everything about it is original he says don't worry about it just go ahead and just cover up those seat springs the way they are so that's what I'm gonna do Well, I'm going to be doing the same exact thing here to this backrest. So I'm not going to bore you guys with that. Because it's another long process. I'm stripping this down to the frame. Oh man, what a mess that was. Everything had to go in the trash. Now, next up is repatting these seat frames. So the first thing that we always do is take our burlap. We're going to put the burlap on. So now for technique number 5,884. How to stretch burlap on a seat frame. So what I do is I just anchor it down on one corner like that. Go to the opposite corner, just pull on it, put a nice stretch on it like that. We're going to do the four corners first. So we'll do this on all four corners. In case if you're wondering, this is a hog green pliers and hog rings. Maybe you've heard of those before, maybe you haven't. So that's what it is. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and pull the four corners, just like that. So once we have all the four corners done, we've got a nice tight stretch, you see that? So from there, all we do is fill in the middle. Just like that. So next is the foam. This is what we call in the industry a one inch foam topper. At least that's the way I order it. Uh, maybe they call it something else on YouTube nowadays. They always change the name of things. What I do is I usually don't put foam on the back edge of the bottom cushion because I don't want it to interfere with the back rest. So, uh, and then also we have some hardware that we got to mount back on here again. So I usually just go right up to that metal, the edge of that metal right there. I'll align this with the edge of the foam, just like that. The only thing I'm really concerned about is making sure that there's enough overlap on the sides and the front. That's plenty right there. So I think what I will be doing so I'll just measure this here because so, I want a nice straight line up front. So I think I'm just going to call it um, I can use a lot. I'll call it 26. 26 inches right there. I'll mark it on the other side. 26.
keep my straight edge mark it So there's a couple different ways of cutting this foam. If you've ever watched any of my other videos, you will know that I always use my handy dandy trusty hacksaw blade. Right there. It's not rocket science. People always ask me what size hacksaw blade I use. And I just tell them that I really just grab the closest one that's within my reach so not rocket science so you can cut this foam with a hacksaw blade the other way of cutting it is with scissors Instead of just eyeballing it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and measure the width of the foam, find the center, so 35 inches right here, mark that, and I'll also do the same on the seat frame. Find the center, so this one here says 58, so quickly on the math. What is that? 20, 29 inches. I know you guys probably did that faster than I did. My brain's a little slow. Okay, so now there's no guessing. I just marked up the match up the two white marks right there. So sometimes what I will do is I will take some glue and I would just slightly glue the burlap and the foam I just do that so that way it doesn't move around on me later it doesn't have to be a lot of glue So now when I go to install the new seat cover, it's going to press all this down on the side. You see that? We're going to have a nice smooth side. So before I put the new seat cover, I'm also going to be putting a couple layers of white Dacron pad on here. So that's what the customer chose. I gave him the choice of either cotton or Dacron, so we're going with the white Dacron. Now I'm going to do the same exact thing to the backrest, and I won't bore you guys with that because you already saw it. I went with a lower density, softer foam for the backrest for extra comfort. Now for technique number 29, don't assume that your cut of material is already square. Even when you get a brand new roll, they never cut it square. So what you do is you take your square and line it up. Make sure it's square, mark it, and now everything that you measure from this point or from this point, you know is going to be square because you're not guessing. So now for the fun part, we're going to start making patterns on this black vinyl right here. So I always start out with the, uh, the cent from the center and I work my way out. So this is going to be... One of the centerpieces right here, and these are the inserts. So what I do is 
I usually make the patterns like this. So I make the two seat inserts at the same time. So that way I know that they're going to be exactly the same on the backrest and the bottom cushion. That's technique number 889. And here comes Miss Nibbles! Yay! You, did you go pee pee? Did you go pee pee? Oh, good girl. Good girl. So when I make the new patterns, I'm going to make sure everything is squared up. So really what I did here is I marked the corner right here. Mark this corner right here. That way I get my measurement. I can see that the width of this is about 19 and a half inches. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a quarter inch right there, quarter inch right there. So 19 and a half and 20. So I'll mark here, 19 and a half and 20. And, ew, 19 and a half, 20. Okay, so that's the first insert. So let's do, let's call that one like passenger or something. So if I call this passenger, I'm gonna call it bottom. I'm just gonna put B, oh, this one here will be driver. B, A for backrest. Okay, so let's do the other one, the second one. So really, this here, We'll get some right there. The second one will be the same. Just double check, 19 and a half inches. So 19 and a half. 19 and a half. So the height now it's And there we have it. We have four seat inserts right there. And they're all the same size. I finished marking everything up. So this one I called driver bottom cushion. Passenger bottom cushion. Driver backrest. Passenger backrest. So I'm just going ahead and cut this out. Now we're going to do the same exact thing for the center. This is what goes between the two seat inserts. So I'm just basically going to mark a corner. So do you remember how I cut on the line? And there should be a little bit extra just like this one, right? So this one here is about a good half inch, but we don't even need that much. So usually what I do when I cut this edge is I add 
three eighths of an inch. And this one here is already done too, so I got that width now. And I got the height right here. Okay, now I can go ahead and mark it up. So we'll go ahead and take our square again. Okay, so now I have a width of ten and a half. So we'll go ten and a half right here. Go ahead and mark that. Take our square again. Look at that. Amazing, huh? Okay, got it all marked up. Now let's just cut it out. So what I usually do when I cut out for patterns like this where I know I'm going to be making foam uh, inserts because I'm going to be gluing foam on the back of this is I go on the outside of my line because the line is what I'm going to use to sew on. So I have a little bit extra on the outside of that that I could trim away after I sewed it up. And that, my friends, would be technique number 71. Okay, so this one here, I'm going to call it backrest. This one, I'm going to call it bottom cushion. Now these are the ends of that bottom seat. So this here happens to be the passenger side. So what I'm going to do here, I cut it here with the scissors. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add on that 3 eighths of an inch. Right? Okay, then go ahead and mark out the, mark out the pattern. To make sure we get a nice straight line, we use a straight edge. Join the two right here. Look at that, how nice and straight that one is. So now we're going to flip this over and make a mirror image. So one way to do that is to flip it over, mark it out. Or sometimes what I do is instead of the China marker, what I use is white chalk. So if you do use white chalk, let's say we did use white chalk, right? This is what I do. So we got our mirror image, get our nice straight edge. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to cut on the outside of the line again because this is going to be foamed. Doesn't really matter how much you leave on um, leave on there. I mean, you could, you could leave like this much if you want it or this much if you want it. Doesn't matter. Okay, so we got our pattern. So now for technique number 102, what you do is you take your pattern like this, you flip it over to get your mirror. Hit it with your hand. Or sometimes what I'll do is I'll just take my straight edge like this, my yardstick, and just pat it down. And voila, look at that. 
we just transferred the pattern to the other side. By the way, voila in French or in English, I guess. In English means ta da! Yeah. Cut this one out. There we go. Okay, it's time to start foaming all of our pieces. So this is what we're using. Okay, we're using a quarter inch scrim on this one here. Scrim is the back, the fabric backed foam that you use for sewing. So anyway, this scrim here is uh, like tough as nails. You can't push a pencil through this or a pen or something. It's really tough. Um, I don't go cheap on my customers, so I always buy the best thing that's available. So anyway, that's scrim for those of you that didn't know. So what I will do now is I will take this, flip it over. We'll go ahead and start spraying some glue. So you don't want to put a lot of glue. You just put just a little bit. It's basically just to hold it in place. And the other thing when you glue into foam, is you put it together right away with a contact adhesive. There's no need to let it wait, let it, wait to let it dry for five or ten minutes, like yeah, we say for contact adhesive. But just put it together right away, just like that. You see that? Pretty cool, huh? Kubila. That's Chinese for cool. Kubila. We just learned some Chinese today. That's one. Just go ahead and do all the rest of them. Just like that. Now I have all the seat insert panels marked up, patterned out and glued onto the scrim backed foam so next step is to start sewing all these up on these lines you see all the white lines right there that's where it gets sewn so i've had people tell me that they don't do that step they don't sew them up they just leave them like a raw edge like this but i'm going to show you the way i do it the way i've always done it for 44 years. So let's go ahead and sew everything up on the white line. So being that this isn't this piece isn't connected to anything else, you don't have to lock the stitch. Just start sewing. What I usually do is I put the needle in the corner like that. That way you can rotate your material. You see that? If you don't do that already, give it a try. Now this is the reason for the sewing. When you trim it out, you trim right next to that thread. Matter of fact, the trick is to cut as close as you can to that thread without actually cutting that thread. Just like that. Now we have a finished panel. So let me know what you think about that. Do you like the sewn edge better or do you like the raw edge? Leave it in the comments. Now that you've seen how that's done, I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing to all of these pa pattern panel patterns. So it's going to take me a while to get through all of this. So 
I'm just gonna go ahead and get it done and I'll see you when I'm finished. Well, this is the last of it right here. So, for the seat inserts here, I have the customers wanted some kind of a design in here, like pleats or something like that. That would have been done before I did this step. So I would have did the pleats first before I did the outside of the pattern. Just to let you know, this customer here wanted smooth and plain seat inserts. So we always give them what they want. They got the money, we got the time. Now I'm gonna cut all the strips for the weld. So really, what I do is I just cut a strip anywhere between about, say, one inch to maybe one and a quarter of an inch, just like that. If you've never made weld before, or some people call it piping, some people call it beading, some people call it other things, but... I've always known it as a weld. Even right here, you know, you will tell you, I bet. I don't know if you can see that right there, but this is the size that I use. And I believe right there, it does say weld cord. So this is really like a weld insert for your weld. So it is weld. What the heck? It's not, does it say beading? It doesn't say piping, it says welt. Okay, now that I got that out of the way. Here we have our strips here for our welt. And we're going to put the welt insert inside that. So what you're going to want to be sure that you have is a welt foot. So you see that little quarter uh, round size right there in, in the bottom of that foot? That's what helps guide the cord, the welt cord. So it's really a welt foot. I don't think I've ever heard it called a beading foot or a piping foot. But as you can see here... What happens is the welt it fits right inside there right inside that little space right there and that's why they call it a welt foot and that's what's going to help us here so what i do is i put the welt insert in the middle of the welt piece that i cut out so anyway what i do is just go ahead and start your stitch you put your needle down into it so that way it holds it and then what I do is I hold the material in my hand like this and I use my fingers and my palm as a as a guide to fold this over I put a little tension on it I pull on it just a little bit and then what I do is I take my right hand and I press down on here to fold it and then I just start sewing And that, my friends, is a welt, if I ever saw one. I actually have a video about how to make different types of welts. So remember how I, how I said that I usually work from the center out to the edges? So this is the center panel right in the middle of the seat right here. So 
So that's what I'm going to start. So I'm going to go ahead and sew the weld onto that. Put a little bit of tension on it. Line it up where you want it. One way to do it. Then take my insert. I'd like to flip it over so that way I could see where it was sewn the last time. That's where I'm going to want to sew it this time. So go ahead and put your panels together. This time we're going to want to lock the stitch. Make sure you lock the stitch because we're putting panels together. And there we go. Look at that. You got a welt in there between the two panels. Like I always say, there is always more than one way of getting things done. So, another way of doing it is to put your welt down like this. Get your other panel, put it on top of that. So what you're doing is you're skipping that first stitch that installs the welt onto the panel. So what you do is, is you line everything up where you want it, lock your stitch, put everything where it belongs, and then just start sewing. This way is a little bit more risky. The result is almost the same, but I still believe that when you sew the welt onto the material first, that it's more accurate. Because things can move on you when you do what you just saw me do. It's still always possible, but you know what? I don't think it gets as tight. I still think it's better the other way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and improve this one now, tighten it up a little bit. See, so I'm still sewing more. I'm sewing the same amount as I did on that other one. Okay, always check your work. That's one of the things, always check your work. Because you want to be the one that checks your work. You don't want your customer to be the one to check your work and, and find the problem. You have to find the problem before the customer finds the problem. So there we go. I'll just continue on the other side. There we go, we got our full face insert. That is for the bottom cushion. Now I'm gonna do the backrest. Now it's time for me to make the skirt for the bottom cushion. So you can see that on the passenger side here is more accurate of a pattern where you can see as we get to the driver's side where everything was shrunk and misshapen, we, we lost our straight line there. So we're going to make all that up again. So what's the first thing we do? Grab the China marker. What I'm going to do 
is mark the corners add that extra three and add that extra three-eighths of an inch right there because I cut it with the scissors I'm just going to go straight down to there right there and I know that it's going to be this long right there so I'm going to go ahead and draw that up also now's a good time to add in our marks right here Now these are the side skirts for the side of the bottom cushion. I remarked it for you in white chalk so that way you can see it better. So I'm not going to be foaming up the sides so it's just going to be the vinyl. That's why I cut pretty much right on that line. So I left I, I left some of the chalk showing because what we're going to do now is we're going to flip this over, make our mirror image. So let's go ahead and take these three pieces of the bottom skirt here for the bottom cushion and sew all these together. So we've got three pieces here. I know that this is the top because that's where my marks are. So we'll go ahead and put this one here together. There we go. That is our bottom skirt. It goes all the way around. This seat here is going to get more black welt. So I dug this out of the archives. Some of you old timers might remember this stuff. So what this is is ready made welt. We used to use this stuff by the ton in the 1970s and 1980s. Anyway, I had a little bit left over. I've been carrying this roll with me for decades. So anyway, you can see it's seen its better days as far as the container goes, but I'm gonna use what's left of this on this seat. I think it's just fitting to use it for this project. Look at that, ready-made welt.
Okay, let's make a quick rear skirt for that bottom cushion. So this is also misshapen. So I'm just gonna really do the length right here. And then because I can see this one here is a lot narrower than this one. Look at the difference between the two. Can you imagine that? So what I'm gonna do is just flip this one over. That way I can get that opposite width measurement right there, just like that. And take the straight edge now. So now is a good time to find our centers. So basically what I do is just fold it in half. Like that. Mark our center. Front and back. Just like that. Do the same here on the rear skirt. Go ahead and fold that in half. Mark that. So we got that marked. And while we're at it, we'll do the front skirt the center now we have center on all parts so now for technique number 58 so what technique number 58 is is starting from the center now that we found our center Start from the center, work our way out, flip it over like that. Start from the center and work your way out. That way you know you're starting from the center. And you know that by doing that you can't mess up. You're not going to end up with too much material on one side or not enough on one side. So what we do is we start from the center right here. You can either lock your stitch or don't lock the stitch. It doesn't really matter at that point because it's gonna be locking itself later anyway on the second side. So let's just go ahead and sew up this bottom skirt. Bottom rear skirt. Like that. That's the first side. Now we're going to flip it. Now, if you didn't lock in your stitch at the first time, now is a good time to lock in stitch. Or else you don't even have to lock the stitch because it's already cross stretch. Now the last thing to do is to sew this the bottom skirt on the bottom seat cushion. So we're going to match up our lines. Going to do the same thing that we just did before. We're going to match up those lines, center where we marked the center. Go ahead and start sewing.
after you're done with that side, what do you do? Next, we flip it over, right? Okay, flip it over. Start from the center. If you notice, I didn't lock the stitch that last time. So what I do is I just start back here a little bit further and you can just start sewing. Or if you want, you can lock the stitch. It doesn't really matter. The result is the same. So next, I'm going to go ahead and sew a listing. So what a listing is, is it's folded in half like that makes a little pocket where you can either put a listing wire inside there or in this case if you're missing a listing wire I'm going to show you how to um, you could put a welt insert in there and make your own listing I'm going to show you how to do that and that my friends would be technique number 821 Now what I do is I take this heavy uh, 5 30 second solid welt insert and that's what's going to make and it's going to replace the, the listing wire. Oh, look at that well now we have a listing wire inside the listing right there that's what we're going to use to hook the hog ring to hook up into the seat frame that's how we fasten the seat cover on okay so what we're going to be putting here is some dacron pad instead of cotton because we don't want any mice to get into this guy's new truck seat so we'll go ahead and trim this one out here. Now we get to see the fruits of our labor. So I'm going to go ahead and put this seat cover on the bottom cushion. So do you remember a long time ago we marked center on the seat cover right there? Okay, I also marked center on the seat frame, which is actually this one right here. So that's the center of the seat frame. So what I do is I match up the center here with that center right there. Okay, so what I do is I take my hand and I put my hand on the inside here and I hold that corner down. And that's what we do is I just roll this over like that. I think you're going to notice something a little different right away. You're going to say, hey, I don't remember seeing him do that. So anyway, for this particular customer, what he had requested was three pockets, one, two, three, and a bag here for his 22 rifle. So I went ahead and did that. And I know it's not going to be a usual thing for every truck seat, but what I showed you earlier is typical. But what I'm showing you now is what the customer really wanted.
Well, I'm going to go ahead and throw the blanket underneath this seat because we don't want any tragedies. So this is technique number 122 is to lay a blanket down over your table so that way you don't damage the vinyl. Because if you did all that work, you went through all that work and you damaged the vinyl, that would be a tragedy. So I'm going to go ahead and roll this over on, on its top. Just like that. So I'm just going to go ahead and trim off any excess that we have here. We don't need that. We'll just get in the way. So before we start the hog rings, on the back of the backrest right here, see where I marked the center right there? We got to make sure that our centers line up. So I marked the cover here. The seat frame is covered there. Okay, so we're going to take our hog rings and our hog ring pliers. Or I should have said our hog rings and our hog ring pliers. Okay. We'll go ahead and start put our center up first just like that now that we have that center I'll also do the front center so this is our mark right here and this is the center on the frame so I'll go ahead and put that one Next, what I like to do is I like to grab these back corners like this, and I like to pull them back, go this way and this way. That helps take care of a lot of the wrinkles in the future. Now you won't have to worry about wrinkles. Go ahead and pull it. Oops, just lost my hog ring. Okay, put it back on. That means I gotta pull it again. Darn it. Okay. This is times when I wish I had three hands. But if I had three hands, I think I'd look really weird. I'd look really, I'd look weird if I had three hands. So anyway, I have two hands. Go ahead and do this. Pull on it. Miss my hog ring again. See, this is like real world stuff, right? I could have edited all that out out but then you wouldn't know what to expect if I edit out all the errors okay now I think I'm getting closer there we go got it now we'll do the same for the other side pull on it Okay, that's the hard part. Now all we have to do is just fill in all the center right here and right here. Let's go ahead and warm up the vinyl a little bit with a heat gun. Okay, 
Now that I got that installed, I'm going to do the same for the backrest. So anyway, like I was saying, ah!